The route to Thetford starts close to the village of Lackford, next to Westo Country Park, and follows a long section of the Icknield Way, an ancient track running through Suffolk. The Icknield Way crosses through King's Forest along an avenue of trees for several miles to reach a crossing of the B1106 south of Elverdon. The route briefly leaves the original Icknield Way, only to rejoin it again near Old Barnum Slip, where it continues northeast in the direction of Thetford. On the outskirts of the town, the St Edmund Way crosses Barnum Cross Common, which sits alongside the British Trust of Ornithology, Nunnery Lakes Nature Reserve. Once in the town, there's a short detour to visit the spectacular Motton Bailey Earthworks, before joining the Little Ouse River and ending in the town centre. After getting public transport back to Lackford, the St Edmund Way almost immediately joins the Icknield Way. The path passes through the King's Forest, with the autumn colours really beginning to shine today. The King's Forest, along with Thetford Forest, collectively form the largest lowland forest in the UK. The Icknield Way is an ancient trackway, possibly dating back to prehistoric times and most certainly used in the Roman period through to the medieval times. It joins the famous Ridgeway in Wiltshire and follows a chalk escarpment all the way to Norfolk where it joins the Peddersway National Trail. A long distance path known as the Icknield Way Trail is a 110 mile route that follows the line of the ancient trackway. Walking through miles of forest is a real change from the arable fields and low-lying marsh earlier on the St Edmund Way. I'm now deep into the Brex, a 393 square mile area of dry, sandy heath and woodland. Its unique habitat is home to some of the rarest wildlife in the country, including stone curling, woodlark and firecrests. The St Edmund Way continues northeast for some miles before any interruptions, the first being a crossing of the B1106 at Shelter House Corner, just on the south side of Elverdon Park. It's here that the route leaves the Icknold Way briefly before rejoining it at Barrows Corner. It's here that the route leaves the Icknold Way briefly before rejoining at Barrows Corner, where three long distance trails, the Icknold Way, St Edmund Way, and Angles Way, all combine together, destined for the nearby town of Thetford.
the route is briefly interrupted by another road crossing, with the distant roar of the A11 just a mile or so to the northwest. But it doesn't distract from the beauty of this unique and interesting Breckland landscape. The St Edmund Way gently descends down to Barnum Cross Common, a 171-acre site of special scientific interest on the southern outskirts of Thetford. It's a local nature reserve and forms part of the Breckland Special Area of Conservation. On the common's eastern side is Nunnery Lakes, a beautiful nature reserve owned and managed by the British Trust for Ornithology. Formed from old gravel pits, the reserve is now home to rare wildlife with three kilometres of trails allowing people to explore this rare habitat. As I enter the town of Thetford, it's hard to miss its rich history. This is Nunnery Arch, built in 1600 and was once the entrance to the nearby St George's Nunnery. As I make my way further into the town, I cross over Nuns Bridges, which marks where the ancient Icknilde Way crossed the River Thet and Little Ouse in 3000 BC. A short but very worthwhile detour off the St Edmund Way leads me to Castle Park. Here, large earthworks of ramparts and ditches, dating as far back as the Iron Age, defend the second highest Norman Mott in the country. Thetford Castle once stood atop of this large Mott, which dates back to the early Norman period, and one of two castles in the town. The Little Ooze is followed into the town centre and to my overnight stop, with just one day's walking left before I reach the end of the St Edmund Way.